All right, now let's check out the next organelle, which is, it has a lot of names, but uh, I like to call it Golgi body because it's really simple, but it can be also known as Golgi apparatus or it can be known as the Golgi complex. And basically what it is, it's over here, and basically what it is, it's just a stack of flattened sacs. Okay, and there can be more than one in an animal cell, but generally I think you'll just come across one during your A-level and we're going to keep it simple for our sake. And it's constantly being formed at one end of the ER and it's broken down again on the other to form Golgi vesicles. So basically its process is it collects, processes, and sorts molecules ready for transportation. And an example would be, as I've written here, addition of sugar to proteins. So for example, to form a glycoprotein, or it can be the removal of amino acids to form a functional protein. Or for example, in plants, it can be used the enzymes convert the sugars to a cell wall, so a functional, you know, a structural component, which then will be used to build the cell wall of the plant. So let's go ahead and take an actual look at the process, which has four steps. Well, I, it's made here, written down here in four steps. So basically, in the first step, the proteins are made by the ribosomes in the rough endoplasmic reticulum and then are pinched off into vesicles. So it's made in the rough endoplasmic reticulum and then it's made into vesicles. So here it is, a transport vesicle, all right? And then the second step, the vesicles containing the proteins fuse into the Golgi body where the proteins are modified. So the purpose of the Golgi body happens. And then the third step, the vesicles containing the modified proteins break away from the Golgi body, so here. And then, so it's also known as the secretory vesicle. And then the fourth step is simply exocytosis. So the vesicle fuses with the cell surface membrane, releasing the proteins to the outside cell. So it's just a simple four-step process, and I recommend you remembering this. Next, let's check out lysosomes which are basically spherical sacs with no internal structure and they contain hydrolytic or digestive enzymes which are responsible for the breakdown of old and unwanted organelles and why is it contained in these sacs it's because you don't want the entire cell to be digested so it's contained in these protective sacs and they're only used where they need to be. By the way, this is an animal cell. I just wanted an enlarged or zoomed version of a lysosome because over here you can see the lysosome is only a circle. And it's a single membrane and it's around 0.1 to 0.5 micrometers. An example of where these would be used is in mammary glands after lactation, they digest away the lactating cells or lactating the organelles which are responsible for lactation, I mean. And or another example would be, a more common example would be in white blood cells where these lysosomes are used to digest the bacteria. And now let's move on to the next organelle, which is known as the mitochondrion. Now, as soon as you see mitochondrion, you should realize that this is the powerhouse of the cell. This is where all the energy is made and is released, and it's what keeps your body going. Now here in the diagram, you can see that the mitochondrion is this specific structure, and the function of the mitochondrion, so if you want the mark, is responsible for aerobic respiration. It provides energy for the cell. Energy is released from energy-rich molecules through a series of steps. Now these series of steps you will learn, for example, glycolysis, et cetera, et cetera, in A2. And you don't need to know that, but you need to know that it is a series of steps. The secondary function is synthesis of lipids, but this is the main function. Now a rough estimate as to the size would be around one micrometer in diameter. And muscle cells, so cells which make up your muscle, muscle tissue will have more of these mitochondrion because they require more energy. Now let's take a look at the mitochondrion structure because it's very well suited for its purpose. Now, just like the nucleus, the mitochondrion is a double membrane organelle. So first let's look at the inner membrane. The inner membrane is more selective, okay? So it controls more strictly what enters and leaves the mitochondrion. The inner membrane 
makes these folds and these folds are labeled as here as crustae and now you may ask why are there these folds well it's pretty simple really and I think it's a year seven thing or something like that it basically it increases surface area and therefore it makes the reactions which happens more reactions to happen therefore it's more efficient so whenever you say like why is there a crystal you just say it's because it increases surface area therefore it increases efficiency because it allows more reactions to take place okay and then there is the outer membrane which is more permeable however it does not allow h2o soluble molecules to go in therefore it has these things called transport membrane proteins the specific ones are called aquaporins and it forms aqueous channels to allow the H2O soluble molecules to pass through into the intermembrane space. Now I keep mentioning intermembrane space, well maybe not keep mentioning, but the intermembrane space is the space between the inner and the outer membrane and it is a very important space which you will need to know in A2. But you, but you still need to know this for AS so you just need to know that that's the space between the inner and the outer membrane. Now, crystae, as I mentioned, are these finger-like projections. And then there's the matrix, which is the interior solution. Now, there are the other things called granules, ribosomes, and ATP synthase. Now, this thing is an enzyme which is needed for the respiration reaction. So, you know, as I said, it's very well suited. So, therefore, it contains these enzymes within its matrix. And then it has its own DNA and it has its own ribosomes. And it proposes a new theory, which we will take a look at in just a second. Now, just before we move on to the theory, just a small piece of information and I guess a summary. Mitochondria produces ATP. ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate and is importantly known as a universal energy carrier. And as I mentioned earlier, the folding of the cristae increases surface area and therefore increases efficiency. And here is just a diagram. I guess of a summary of the respiration reaction, so the series of steps, but you don't need to worry about that at this level. So let's go ahead and check out the theory. Now I keep mentioning this theory, so let's actually take a look at what this theory is. This is known as the endosymbiont theory. Now endo meaning inside and symbiont actually has a long definition, it is an organism which lives inside another organism for mutual benefits. Now, in the 1960s, the scientists actually discovered that the mitochondrion was not an organelle, it was actually an independent bacteria. Now, why do they believe this? It's because it has these things such as DNA, ribosomes, and granules, and these things were used to sustain these these organelles, I mean these tiny things, I guess are mini organelles for this mitochondrion, is what helped it sustain independently before it was adopted and integrated into our human cells. Now the ribosome is smaller than the our ribosome. So the ribosome size inside the mitochondrion is 70S, whereas the Ribosomes which are lying free in the animal cell and in the RER are size ATS. So this is what led scientists to believe that the mitochondrion were actually independent before they were colonized by us. 